Hi friends, welcome to the Inspired Knitting Podcast. I'm your host, Bobby, and I am coming to you from Southern New Brunswick, Canada. Today is Saturday, February the 24th, 2024. Welcome. This is episode 102, I believe. Yes, 102. It's right behind me. Uh, welcome. This is a podcast about my knitting adventures, and there is crochet and spinning and all sorts of fibery fun. So if that's your kind of jam, then perhaps this is a podcast for you. So yeah, it has been a little bit uh, oh, first, where you can find me on the internet. I always forget this part. You can find me on Instagram as Inspire Knitting Podcast. That's where I am most active, although I have been slacking as of late. Um, and you can also find me on Ravelry as X Country Girl 1986 X. All that is posted below in the description box as well as the show notes. So yes, it has been a month since we last uh spoke to each other. It has been, it has been a month guys. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. There was some really good ups and then I had, uh, some pretty stressful stuff happening in my real life. So <sighs> it's been a month, but I will share with you just quickly, uh, the exciting part, the good part. Um, February the 10th, there was a winter gathering, wool gathering in Sussex, New Brunswick, Canada, hosted by um, Nancy of Knit Sip Happy, Sophie of Cozy Meadow Knits, and Manon of La Volée Gifts and Co. Um, if I'm missing anybody, I apologize, but they hosted this beautiful wool gathering and it was amazing. Um, it has, it was my first, um, like wool gathering. I have been to knit groups before, but this was my first, uh, large event and it was amazing. It, there was a great turnout. It was for three days. You could go, uh, Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday morning. Um, I think everybody pretty much, uh, went on their own way, like back home. Um, so it was at a restaurant inn in Sussex and I can't remember, I think it's called the All Seasons Inn. So it was a restaurant and they also had a uh, lodging for you to stay. So I really wish that I could have been there Friday night into Saturday to uh, knit with everybody, but unfortunately I could not. So I did go on Saturday. I, um, was encouraged uh, by Mina uh, to perhaps become a vendor and uh, sell my project bags. So uh, as you all have known, I have made project bags in the past, but just haven't really had the inspiration to do it. Um, so this kind of kicked me back into gear with my uh, sewing and my sewing machine. And I uh, knocked out some bags and um, yeah, I had some good feedback. So that was pretty awesome. There was a little mini market that happened on Saturday. It was from one to four. So I got to meet uh, a lot of wonderful people. I got to meet some new friends and I got to meet uh, some people that watch the podcast. Hi, Tasha. So it was really exciting. I must say that my first gathering, I am addicted. It is just so amazing to be in a space where you have like-minded people like yourself and you guys, all the beautiful knits. Oh my gosh, there were so many beautiful ones. I loved it. So thank you again, Mana, for inspiring me to go back to my sewing machine. I had a lot of fun. I do have uh, some bags in stock now to sell. So I'm trying to get a uh, online storefront set up. I used to sell through Etsy but I'm trying to get away from Etsy just because of the fees. So I'm gonna see if I can get something else put together. Um, so we'll see what happens and I will keep you guys updated on that. So yeah, that was a lot of fun. I did get some things, not a lot. <laughs> I did get some things at the wool gathering. Um, so I will leave that for stash enhancement just in case that's not your thing, which I understand. And yeah. So today I have some works in progress and some finished objects. Um, so yeah, let's just get right on into it. As I said before, anything that I talk about in today's podcast, I always link below in the show notes. 
So grab your knitting or your crocheting or your craft of choice. Grab your beverage. I am drinking a coffee today. Yes, it doesn't really look like coffee, but uh, I'm trying to cut back in my uh, milk intake. It just hasn't been agreeing with me lately. Um, I think I might actually be lactose intolerant. I've dealt with that in the past and I've been tempted to buy lactose intolerant milk, but there's people in my house that like drinking regular milk. So I don't know what to do just yet. I'm just cutting back on the amount. My coffee still tastes amazing with the amount of milk I'm putting in it. So it's all good. So for now, and this is like my third coffee of the day. It is, it's a weird one out there. We had a really cold snap. We've had a mild uh, winter, a good winter, but we had a really cold snap and the last couple days have been really mild. And this morning it was pouring rain, which I was like a little excited that we were gonna melt away the snow that we got, but no it turned into a blazing snowstorm out there today. So <laughs> we're covered in snow <laughs> on top of the snow we already had. So there's your weather report. <laughs> Welcome to Atlantic Canada. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm going to start with what I am wearing today. I decided to wear my love note. This is a pattern by Tin Can Knits. I did this one in the 2X size, I believe. And I followed pattern for this one. I did all the lace repeats on it. It's just got this really pretty, um, it's almost like a leaf stitch, what I would call like a leaf stitch. Very beautiful sweater. I knit this in um, Knit Picks Hawthorne, right? Yes, Knit Picks Hawthorne fingering. And I held it with their, um, nitpicks a loft mohair black mohair and I just really really love that combination this is one of my favorite favorite sweaters ever I have four love notes in total and it is by far my favorite so I had a few recommendations at the sh uh, the wool gathering of uh, some other sweaters that fit like the love notes so they are on my list to do but I am not casting on anything on guys. I'm getting stuff done first. So anyways, this is the Love Note Tin Can Knit. Highly recommend it. Um, I wore it out the other day when it was like minus 20 and I just had this on and I had like an undershirt obviously because in the house I don't mind there being this much lace but I like having something covering myself when I'm out in public with it and I had my winter jacket and a shawl and believe it or not this the wool and mohair just kept me so toasty warm I actually ditched the jacket because it was a beautiful sunny day the sun is getting nice and hot and I was just wearing my my knitted sweater and my shawl and I was perfectly warm and I am a cold running person I'm always cold so you gotta love wool I love it. I need more wool mohair sweaters. So, highly recommend. Okay, so first I'm gonna start off with finished objects. And I have a couple pairs of socks and I am so excited to show these because now I can start wearing them. I decided to cast on a pair of kind of Valentine's Day themed socks and I have showed these before, but now they are finished and they are very beautiful. I absolutely love them. So for this, I didn't follow a pattern. I just cast it on 64 stitches. I did a two by two rib vanilla. And this time I decided to do an eye of partridge heel. You can just Google eye of partridge and there are uh, free um, like written instructions for it for different sizes. So if you do like a 56 stitch, 64, so on and uh, so forth, uh, I presume if you looked it up on YouTube, there's probably a tutorial for it somewhere out there. So I just decided to do the Aya Partridge. I thought it's kind of a Valentine's Day themed sock, so it would, it would just add a little bit of 
something fancy to the pattern. Uh, I decided to uh, do like a couple rows of a pop of color at the top here. I got inspiration from Kay, the crazy sock lady. She does this as well, and I think it's really pretty. And then all I did here is I just grabbed a bunch of uh, minis and scraps that I had in kind of reds and pinks, and I just put them together. So I don't really know what they are. All I can tell you is this one here and this one here, which actually is sparkle. It's like a silver Stellina in it as well. These are actually a mini set from Ginger Snap that I added in there, but the rest I couldn't really tell you. I'm gonna guess that it's Northern Pearl and Polka Dot Creek because that's what I have a lot of. But yeah, it just came together really, really well and I really love them. So I got those done. And then I just actually casted these off yesterday. Uh, these were my first pair of socks that I casted on uh, January 1st, so my first pair of 2024. And these are my blueberry waffle socks. And I honestly don't know what has taken me so long to finish these. Uh, Blueberry Waffle Socks is a free pattern on, uh, it, you can find it on Ravelry, which I will link below, and there's free written instructions for it. It's a pretty popular pattern. And it's just a beautiful textured rib pattern. And I just did a slip stitch, heel flap and gusset, my standard toe. Um, this one I did cast on 64 stitches and then when I got down here I cast, um, I decreased down to 56 because I like my foot to be slightly uh, tighter, which I normally do on all my socks. Just a better fit for me. But look how pretty that is. This yarn is um, a colorway from uh, Lichen and Lace. It's Blackberry Pie. Unfortunately, it was an exclusive colorway to last year's, um, one of her sock clubs from last year. I think it was the sock train, but I'm not 100% sure. But um, I picked this one up uh, just before the new year. She had all the colors on sale from last year. So I picked this one up and I absolutely love it. And I have lots of leftovers to put into my scrappy blankets. So I am like super excited about that. Because I love this colorway so very much. And I love the base too. I believe it's an 80-20. So I'm not exactly sure why these took me so long. I think it was just being distracted by other things. But it is a very addicting pattern. Um, ribbing is kind of vanilla knitting to me. It's simple. I can watch TV and podcasts and not have to pay attention to it but it adds enough interest that it's not boring. Like sometimes vanilla knitting can be pretty boring. So I really enjoyed these a lot and I can see myself making more in the future. So blueberry waffle socks, I will post the link below because I'm not a good podcaster and I don't remember who the pattern was written by. It's that kind of day. <laughs> I'm just gonna get another drink of coffee Okay, so the next thing that I have to share with you guys is a new hat that I had casted on. So if you did go to the um, the Will Gathering, you could have uh, casted on a toque. And uh, the toque was the Bolton Pass by Espastri Co., which is a free pattern. And it is a DK weight and I decided to cast it on. It was pretty simple hat and I I had a skein laying around of um, Midnight Cravings. <laughs> Sorry, my mind went blank. Midnight Cravings, um, this is on their comfort sport base. And I had leftovers from my brioche hug by Cozy F Knits. So I decided that this would be perfect. And as you can tell here, it's just a simple, simple stockinette beanie, but it has twisted rib and it comes up into this really, sorry, 
this hat hasn't been blocked yet, it comes into this really beautiful peak. It, you just start uh, doing this kind of peaked design of rib stitches. It looks really cool. So I decided to cast that on. It knit up like really, really quick. I'm not gonna put it on, but it does wear really nice. You could go a little bit longer if you wanted it to be slouchy, or you could just do it more of a beanie. I kind of did something in between. Um, it's knit on a five millimeter DK weight yarn. And there is three sizes to it. There's a small, medium, and a large. I picked the medium size because I have a big noggin. And yeah, I think that it's very beautiful. Like I said, it has to be blocked out. It is a little wonky at the moment, but I really like it and I really love the color. I am so glad that I was able to put this yarn to some good use. So, Bolton Pass by Espastri Co. That was a good one. So I have, might as well continue with the hats. I have a couple more hats that I have uh, knit up for uh, Hats for Hope, which is a charity drive that's currently going on. Um, I have linked it in the last couple episodes and I will make sure I link it again. So I, they're for child size uh, beanies. You could knit them or crochet them. So I have just done a, just a plain knitted one here, two by two ribbing. And for this one here, this is just a uh, Lion Brand Mandala. And uh, let me just see here. This one is in the happy colorway. And as you can see, it's got all these really beautiful colors. So I still have yet to touch into the, the hot pink there. So I'm pretty sure um, that I will be able to get at least three children's toques out of this, perhaps. So it's really nice yarn too. It's like super soft. It is 100% acrylic yarn, I believe, right? Yes. 100% acrylic yarn, um, 150 grams, 344 yards. And I just picked this up at my local Walmart. So those are pretty fun. It's something bright and colorful. And then I have another ball of Mandela as well. This color is in the pure and I've knit up another one. And then I got this one as well. So I've already gotten two toques out of the ball and I'm pretty sure that I have enough to do one more. I just needed to change the colors because if I work with one color too much, then I get bored. So, but I've gotten those two out of one ball so far. Like I said, I think I got another one to go. For this one, just to change it up, I did like a two by two ribbing, but I did um, like a mock cable, just just for some interest. It had the pinks in there, so I thought that it would look really pretty and be really cute on a little girl. So I did that one. So I, I am working on another one uh, of those. I will show that in works in progress. So I have one more finished object and I am so stoked about this one because it's a big one. So I finally finished my Turtle Dove 2 by Espastri Co, which is another free pattern. And this one has been on the go for a long time. <laughs> I think I casted it on like May of last year, June, something like that. It's been a while. It just got put to the wayside like usual. So it, I believe it has a, like a turtleneck on it. I did like a mock neck and it's got raglan increase and it's a very beautiful sweater. I did, it's got twisted ribbing. So I did the twisted ribbing on the collar 
I did it on the bottom and the sleeves as well. The sleeves, I ended up doing a little bit longer um, ribbing just because I prefer that. And also I decided to do a split hem just because it, it sits better. So it does have short row shaping on the back as well. It is a very deep raglan and Nancy had of Knit Sip Happy had uh, recommended that if I don't, um, like it tends to rise up. So if you were to lift your arms, it tends to rise the sweater up. So um, perhaps I didn't want the raglan as long. So I totally agree with that. Um, even I did stop short. I think I did the 2X size, I think. Can't remember now. Um, I think it might be in my project page. I did stop short, but um, I still haven't blocked this. This is Barocco Vintage, uh, by the way, which is an acrylic, 60% acrylic, 40% wool yarn. So I don't know how much walk, washing and blocking is going to change. Um, I have put it on and I am so-so about the fit of it. So one, and I should have known this prior. Um, this sweater here, if you notice, I keep like pulling it down. Um, this one here, I follow to pattern uh, for the love note. And the neck is just slightly confining to me because it does tend to ride up. And I really don't like that feeling, um, which can be adjusted because my other love note, I adjusted it. For this one here, I should have just cast it on and did like a crew neck, a loose fitting crew neck but I wanted the mock neck because I think it looks cute, but it's confining. That's number one, which is totally on me because I did that myself. Number two, the deep raglan, it does tend to ride the sweater up. And even though I did stop short, it is doing that. So I definitely have to wear something underneath it or else if I go to lift my arms, <laughs> y'all are gonna see what's underneath my sweater and that's not good. So I do still have to wear something underneath it, which is, you know, I'm not really a layering person. I like just to wear, if I was to put this on, I really don't want to layer under it. Um, but that's, that's something minor. Uh, number three about it is the sleeves. I wish I had knit them just a little bit longer. Um, I do feel that I'm pulling the sleeve up a little bit. So it, uh, sits under my arm a little bit uh, tighter and when I do that the sleeves are riding up say to here and I want them to be I want them just to sit loosely like this length this is what I prefer so there are some things about the sweater that I'm not really liking which is kind of sad because I love the color for one it is just stunning and gorgeous and I love it I love the Barocco Vintage. I have knit sweaters on it before, and I really like the feel of it. Um, but yeah, I'm going to give it a block, a wash and block, and uh, see how I feel about it. But I'm sure I will wear it for sure, because I put too much work into it not to, and I am not the type of person to rip a, a project out. Um, I just can't do it. And if I feel that I don't like it, I will just have to gift it to somebody that is knit worthy, like really knit worthy. But I think I'm gonna wear it. It's just, I need to, to block it out first perhaps. So there is my Turtle Dove 2 by Espace Trico. Really fun sweater. They have several others. There is a Turtle Dove, original Turtle Dove. They have a crew neck one as well. They have several. Um, so I might check, uh, one of those, but I have other sweaters on the list to do right now. So I will not get too distracted. So there is my turtle dove. It is very beautiful and I hope that I come to love it a lot because I really wanted this one for a long time. So we shall, shall see. Okay. I'm going to grab another quick drink. Okay, so now I will go on into works in progress. So I guess the first one that I'm going to share with you guys is um, the next hat that I am knitting for um, Cherry. 
So I don't have the ball here with me. Um, I just picked up one of those great big massive red heart balls and I saw this one and I couldn't help it. I love a good tweed yarn. This is 100% acrylic but I just thought it was very beautiful. The blue is stunning and it's got those brown flecks of tweed in there. Very, very beautiful. So I decided to cast on another toque and sorry about the clicking guys. I have an extra set of needles in here. So I am not very far on this one. I had just balled, caked up the yarn and got it started. That way if we go out or I just want something simple or different to knit on, I already have it casted on. So I have casted on a barley hat this time. This is a pattern by Tin Can Knits. And the barley, I can't remember if the barley hat is actually a free pattern or not. I can't remember, but it is a worsted weight pattern, I believe. That's what I'm doing. And it does come in all the sizes. So it comes in baby size all the way up to adult large, perhaps. So I follow pattern. It has a one by one uh, rib. And then in case you're not familiar with the barley hat, it has this panel of garter ridges on the front. And then the back is just like plain stockinette. So I thought that would be different, just something different than doing plain uh, knitted hats. And I got my little stitch stoppers on here. These are just some that I had picked up at the Northern Pearl, I believe. Pretty sure. I'm not sure who the designer, the designer was though. But yeah, it's working up really, really nice. So again, child size. So I just have that on the back of my chair for whenever I want something, you know, pretty mindless because it is, it's only a two, two row repeat and you just keep going till your size. And yeah, pretty simple. So I'm just gonna put my needles back away before I get too distracted. Okay, so we got that one. And then the next one, um, Nancy of Knits It Happy is hosting a sock knit along and I believe it goes to the end of March, I think. Head over to her Instagram, knit sip, knit sip Happy, and you can get all the details there. But if you follow her hashtag, and if I remember, I'll put it across the screen here, it's K-S-H-Cal, K-A-L, 2024, and you can enter into uh, sock knit along so you can knit any sock pattern of your choice but if you knit one of Nancy's patterns you can double dip so I would highly recommend knit knitting one of her patterns because she has several really good ones and I do know that she also was giving 25% uh, off of her patterns and I don't remember when that coupon code was good till and it might have been automatically applied to, but go check her out. It might still be going, but I decided to join the knit along, of course, because I love all the socks, especially Nancy's. So I decided to cast on, and my yarn is all tangled. I decided to cast on her smoke gets in your eyes pattern and Whoops, I am getting all caught up here. This is what I've got so far on the first sock. So it is a one by one rib, and then it goes into this beautiful stitch. Isn't that gorgeous? And the pattern is just on the front. On the back, you just got plain uh, stockinette or vanilla. So, I am already, I've already got the leg done and I've set myself up to start my heel flap and gusset. 
so it does knit up really quick um, I just haven't touched it for a couple of days um, just trying to get I really wanted to get the blueberry waffle socks done because they were just on the needles too long and yeah I just wanted them done so I put my attention and my focus on those but now that they are done I'm getting back to this one this one is so addicting it is a four row repeat and once you've done it you don't have to keep looking at the pattern you just keep going and I'm addicted I love this pattern so much and it's so beautiful too when it blocks out so there's that and I'm just going to show you guys the cake it's just this very beautiful movie pink or mauve however you wish to pronounce it and it's got some specks of purple and pink and there's even some specks of like gold yellow gold in there as well so it's very beautiful the yarn that I'm using for this is another lichen and lace I was going through my stash I knew that I wanted a speckled yarn and this one was I've had in there for a little bit so lichen and lace Megan is local to me in Sackville New Brunswick here this is her 80-20 sock, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 100 grams, 365 yards. And I think it's called sumac, the colorway. I am not good with names, so very beautiful. And I love, like I said, I love this base. It's very nice. So I am super excited to get back to work on these ones. It is a very gorgeous pattern. Smoke gets in your eyes. Nancy Wheeler, I love. And I am super excited to be part of the Sock Knit Along. If I manage to get these done in time, um, I believe you can knit more than one pair of socks. So, um, I have some of her other patterns in my library as well, so I don't know. We'll see what happens. <laughs> um, okay, so for the knitting portion of it, I have put a little bit of work on um, one of my like scrappy blankets. Um, it's just the square that I had showed you last time. I'm putting the border on it, so it's nothing to... Uh, too exciting to share. Uh, when I went to the wool gathering, I did pull out a sweater whip. Um, rather than casting on one, I said I would pull an old one out first. And uh, I have it sitting right over here. I just, well, okay, I will share it. Just because I am putting it back into circulation. Um, I took this to the wool gathering with me because it's just plain stockinette. Now I will put the name across the screen here. It is a petite knits pattern. I think it's called the Mar Marcel. Can't remember. Pretty sure. And even if I did remember, I had trouble pronouncing it before. So pretty much um, it's just a top down construction. It's got drop shoulders. I have shared this before. This is an languishing with as well um as you can tell it's all wrinkled from being in the bag so long but it's got a drop shoulder construction which i absolutely love and i'm just doing the striping and it is a striped uh pullover so my stripes i believe i am doing slightly different than pattern i just wanted them to be spaced out more um, I got inspiration from uh, Sharon of The Modern Skein in Texas. Uh, she does have a podcast on YouTube and she knit one of these sweaters and I kind of copycatted her colors because I really, really loved it and I want one. The teddy bear brown and the cream is just so beautiful. I absolutely love it. So when I saw her sweater, I became obsessed and had to, I had to have one of my own. So this one here, I am knitting with, that is not the tag. 
I am knitting with uh, Juniper Moon Farms Panguono, and it is an organic merino, 100% wool. It is 100 grams, 382 yards, and it is a sport, I would say a sport to DK weight yarn. Very beautiful. I absolutely love it. It's rust. It's got that rustic feeling, but it's not itchy, if that makes sense. I have very sensitive skin and this does not feel itchy at all. It's really floofy. It's airy and soft. I really love it. So let me see if I can get the names right. Okay. The cream color here is pearl. And then the brown is, I'm not even going to pronounce it. You guys can focus. Will you focus? No? Oh, there we go to a point. I think I have it listed on my Ravelry, so. I'm not sure why it doesn't want to focus. Oh well. I'm sure I put it on my Ravelry uh, page. So very beautiful colors. I absolutely love them. So this one I put back into circulation. I did knit on it during the show and I didn't have a progress keeper on the sweater so I couldn't honestly tell you how much work I got done on it but I think it was only a couple of rows, which was fine by me. A couple of rows gets it, uh, gives it some progress that it hasn't seen in a long time. So that works fine by me. So this one I am going to be working on and getting it done so I can wear it because I am super, super excited about it. So... And then maybe when I get this one casted off, I that leaves me with two uh, two sweaters left that I have on the needles. And one is technically um, not a sweater, it's like a t-shirt, uh, but I think I'm going to put like the three quarter length sleeves or full sleeves on it. I'm not sure yet. Um, but we'll see. So maybe when I get that one done, I will allow myself to cast a new sweater on. I'm not sure yet, or I just might keep up with finishing stuff first. <laughs> so we'll see. But I did pull that out and put some work on that. And then I also pulled out a other old whip, uh, which this one is meant to be a languishing one because it is a scrappy blanket sorry um, it's just that I haven't worked on it in a long time so I've been watching Kay the crazy sock lady love Kay <laughs> I think I I talk about her every episode I absolutely love her um, she's been doing a lot of scrappy blankets and I just I get so much inspiration from that they're so beautiful Plus my uh, Nomi Angel, she just recently did a crocheted uh, scrappy blanket. And you guys, I think she just started like in January and she's finished already. Like she's a machine. <laughs> it is absolutely beautiful. I love scrappy blankets. They just, they just work up so fast. Uh, I believe Angel did use uh like fingering weight. I know fingering weight takes a little bit longer, but what I love about it is that, especially when you use like the indie dyed uh, yarns, it just adds so much color and so much fun to the blanket. So the one that I pulled out was my granny stripe blanket. Now I am not following any particular pattern, um, or I should say any one's pattern. I just cast it on, I'm going to say 280 some stitches, and then I'm just going back and forth doing like a granny stripe. You guys have seen this blanket before in the past, I just haven't shown it in a while, but um, 
yeah, this is what I have so far. And again, it's like really wrinkled because it's been in a basket for ages. And then I've got it to here. So originally when I started this blanket, um, I was getting, um, I was part of Hypnotic Yarns Patreon. So for my level of Patreon every month, uh, you got a 50 gram uh, skein of yarn. So these bottom two, um, I believe were the full skein or half of it. I can't remember now. So I was just going to have a blanket full of the hypnotic. And then I decided to stop uh, my Patreon. And so then I just turned it into a scrappy blanket. So that hence why there's like a bigger stripes of color at the bottom than there is, you know. So it doesn't matter to me. I might actually like... I have other 50 gram balls or if I knit a pair of socks and I have like, usually I have 46 grams or something, I might actually add in like bigger stripes throughout the blanket, 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 just to equal it out. But yeah, as of right now, all I can do is just grab yarns and add them in until they run out. I'm not going in any particular order. I am trying to be mindful of the colors though. So I did put a couple, this is where I was when I last had worked on it. So I've, I haven't put much on it at all, but I did try a new technique and I saw Kate is doing this and I've always been on the fence about it because I've heard good things about it and I've heard bad things about it um so it's the magic knot ball and some people say that they have trouble with them that they have come apart um Kay actually has a tutorial on her YouTube channel on how she does the magic knot so I've never done this technique before but I gave it a go and it's actually like pretty addicting to do and as Kay says, as long as you pull your knots like tight, you shouldn't have a problem. She's never had a problem. So I gave it a go. I don't seem to have a problem. I was reefing on my knots pretty good and they didn't come apart. So um, I did try to add in a single ply yarn and yes, that did break because if you start reefing on a single ply, it will break. So maybe I was just reefing too hard, but I've decided just to use um, my sock weight scraps. And I just grabbed a bunch that I thought would look nice in sequence for this blanket. And they range in grams. Some are only like little bitty scraps, so maybe a gram or two. And then some are 20 grams, some are 10 grams. I'm not going in any particular fashion or order. I'm just like grabbing some uh, minis out of my stash and adding them in. So I did make this one into a big ball. And when I felt like, okay, I'm kind of like done with doing magic knot right now, I just caked it up because I'd rather work from a cake. And oh, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. I really, really love it. So we'll be doing this again. It is so addicting. So I will crochet this one into the blanket and then I will make another one. So what I decided to do, because I am still tracking how many grams are coming in and out of my stash every month, um, I didn't bring that with me. So I will probably do it next episode to catch you guys up if you're so interested in my venture. But I put this on the scale, uh, the blanket, um, and I am roughly a little over 200 grams into the blanket already. And this magic knot uh, cake ended up being 145 grams. So I just made a little note of that in my book. So when I am done the blanket, I know how many grams in total went into it. So it's, will it be done this year? I honestly don't know. Um, and I just go until I figure that it's 
it's finished but I'm just keeping track to see how many grams I actually got out of my stash into this blanket so yeah it's really fun as I said it's just a granny stripe blanket there's lots of tutorials in that online for this stitch fingering weight yarn and the hook I am actually using is a four millimeter crochet hook this one is a knit picks uh knit picks hook and I was I was gonna use a smaller hook Kay definitely uses a smaller hook for her fingering weight I just don't like it I feel that I would not get the blanket finished if I kept up with it it's too I can knit with small needles, but to crochet with a smaller hook really hurts my hands. So I really like the gauge that I'm getting with a four millimeter, so it works. So that is what I am doing. So this one I now have back into the rotation. So it's another one that I'm going to pick up and uh, get some work on because they are so much fun to see come to life. And I am sorry, I keep knocking the camera today. And it's also exciting because it gets all these scraps out of your stash. And I have quite a few of them. So there's that. Okay, so that's it for the knitting content and the crocheting content of the podcast. So next with you, I have a little bit of stash enhancement um, that I am going to share. And I am going to start with what I got at the wool gathering. So I was set up, um, I guess you could say at the back of the, um, back of the uh, banquet hall. It was hosted in the, the banquet hall. And there was like a lot of people and if you know me i don't do well around a lot of people wonderful folks don't get me wrong i just get very claustrophobic and um unfortunately being in the chair uh it was hard for people to walk around and um so i didn't get to experience the whole uh like mini show that was going on and i I was looking that was probably a good thing that I was kept away from some of the other vendors um but yeah I was buying some really good yarn uh yarn indulgences was there and there was a lot of really amazing vendors but set up next to me was uh the lovely Sophie of Cozy Meadow Knits and there was another lady with her that was selling yarn and I do apologize I do not remember who she was um, but she had like a basket of yarn and they were for extremely discounted prices and I ended up snagging two beauties from her basket and one of them uh, was Tannis Fiber Arts which I have knit with I think once before in the past and this is her Oh my gosh, I should have worn my glasses. 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, four, uh, no, 115 grams, four ounces, and 420 yards. It is a fingering weight and it is a sock set. And I can't tell you what the colorway is because it was, the tag was ripped, but I think it says carrot caramel and I can't read it because I'd have to take the tape off and I really don't want to but I presume that the the mini skein with it is the caramel and then you got your main skein which is like falling apart now but it's just got these goldy colors it's got greens and gray and there's pink in there it's just a very, very beautiful color. So when I saw that, I was like, oh my God, socks. I have to have that. 
I know somebody that is going to love a pair of socks in these. So I got that one. And then I also got this one and this is Camel City Dye Works. And I never heard of them before. And this is on their Salem base. And it is fingering weight, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, 463 yards to uh, 100 grams. And it is in the pansy colorway. Again, a very stunning colorway. I love those pops of yellow, yellowy green. So pretty. Camel City Dye Works. Very gorgeous. Absolutely love. Love, love, love. So I refrained myself and I got two beautiful skeins of yarn. And yeah, they, the one, this will definitely become socks. This one, I'm not a hundred percent sure what it will be just yet. Um, I have a feeling like it has to be something in a shawl or something or a cowl. It's just too pretty for socks. I don't know. I don't know. So we'll see. I don't know what it's going to be just yet. Um, and then another thing that I got and I forgot to bring it with me and I knew I was going to forget it. Um, I will see if I can remember to insert a picture here. Sophie had made up some beautiful stitch markers, uh, for the show and I snagged one of those as well. So I haven't used them yet because I wanted to show them on the podcast. And of course I forgot to bring them. So if I remember, I will post a picture here. Um, but yeah, I cannot wait to put those on my sock projects and use them. They are just so beautiful. So very beautiful work, Sophie. I hope you continue doing them because they're gorgeous. So I was excited. I got those. And those were my only purchases from the show. I was really good. Um, so I refrained myself. And also part of the show, if you brought a bag of fingering weight scraps, uh, you could pick an, another bag of scraps to take home to put in your scrappy blankets. So I ended up uh, getting three bags and I just got these random minis in here. They are all 10 grams. And there are some really fun ones in there. Really fun. So these ones will definitely be going into my blankets. Um, I think that some of them will go into my um, I will make into a magic knot ball. They're 10 grams, so I might sc uh, split them like five into five grams uh, each. I, I'm blanking on the name of my other scrappy blanket, the squares. Uh, I can't remember right now, but it usually uses like four grams per mitered square. So I might, um, I might do that first and then whatever I have left over, I will make into a magic knot ball um for this granny stripe blanket and put it in that so we a stitch in time stitch in time by Kay jones of the bakery bears that's the blanket i'm thinking about so we'll see how that goes but i think i might do that or it just might all go into this one i don't know yet but that was a lot of fun to get some new scraps to put into my blankets so yeah, that is the extent of the last few weeks of my knitting adventures and my life. So yeah, not a whole lot to report on other than that. I live a pretty quiet life and I like it that way. Um, so yeah, I have still been doing a little bit of reading. Um, I did start on the third book of Harry Potter, so I'm still enjoying that. It's a nice, easy read, and with all the stress going on in my life lately, I need a nice, easy read, and that is the perfect choice for me. So I am doing that. 
other than that, um, nothing else really to report. I'm still um, just trying to stay focused on my current whips. Socks are always something that I am going to cast on. I swear to you that I, I keep saying that when I cast off a pair, I am going to finish an old pair first before I cast on a new pair. That never happens. I am addicted to socks. I, as soon as I get one pair off the needles, I just want to cast on a new pair. <laughs> so, and I am refraining right now because I do have an empty pair of sock needles and I'm like, no, no, you got to finish stuff first. So other than that, I am trying to stay focused still and just finish stuff that I have on the go. And so far it's working. So that's really good. So I hope you guys have had a great start uh, to your new year and that your life is going well and not too stressful and that you're enjoying your making life your best life. So until the next time, guys, I guess I will let you go. I will hopefully get back on track with the two week schedule of the two weeks. So we'll see what happens. Until next time, take care and happy knitting. Bye.